Hey guys, it's Emma. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be talking about something that I have been asked about before. The specifics of data scientist offers that I've got from big companies. To do this, I will be speaking frankly about compensation packages I received from tech companies, specifically Airbnb, Lyft, and Twitter. I made this decision for two reasons. The first reason is that this is a topic I get asked about a lot. People are naturally curious about what is the compensation structure for data scientists can look like at tech companies. And because I get a lot of such questions, I thought it would be helpful to make this video to share the real numbers. In this way, I can give people more information when it comes to making career decisions, etc. The other reason is that I believe companies often have an unfair informational advantage over candidates. And I hope that by sharing those real numbers, people will have more information that they can use in the job search process. As it stands now, larger companies are pretty much always in a stronger position than their potential employees. And I think that transparency is a good way to start shifting that power imbalance. To be honest, I did hesitate when deciding to make a video about my own offers because I did not want people to think that I was boasting or bragging. Of course, I don't want anyone to feel inferior or less than when they hear my numbers. However, knowledge is a power after all. And ultimately, I think that the pros outweigh the cons and that this video will be helpful for you guys. All right, so before I get into my personal experience and offers, let's first address what we mean by an offer. What does one normally include? Are we just talking about the salary, salary and the benefits? What exactly does an offer from a tech company look like? Well, typically an offer consists of three major things, a salary, an annual bonus, and an equity. The salary is typically presented as annual salary. This will vary depending on a variety of factors, such as experience, responsibilities, and individual company. Annual bonuses can range from 5% to 15% and are usually standardized across a company based on a certain set of criteria. Due to this, annual bonuses are typically one part of an offer that is non-negotiable because it is usually a company standard. The value of any equity will of course depend on the individual company. A public company will typically give you stock in the company. This can be presented as a part of a four-year schedule, so stock will be vested 25% each year. For example, if you were offered 100k in stock over four years, that will typically be given at 25k a year. However, companies normally can only actually issue stock if they are a public traded company. A company that is not yet public may still offer to give you a certain type of equity compensation. And the two common types are stock options and restricted stock units. Stock options allow you to purchase shares in your company's stocks at a predetermined price for a limited number of years. It means you have to actually buy it to own it. But because the company has not yet gone public, they are essentially paper IOUs rather than real money. Restricted stock units, or RSUs, is another common type of equity compensation and are typically offered after private company reaches a more stable valuation or goes public. Similar to stock options, RSUs vest over time, but unlike stock options, you don't have to buy them. As soon as they vest, they are no longer restricted and are considered the same as if you had bought your company's shares in the open market. It means that RSUs carry less risk than stock options. As long as the stock price doesn't drop to zero, there will always be some value in it. Choosing to accept these types of equity compensation can be risky, but it can pay off if the company goes public. Making an informed decision on the value of this compensation involves doing research, then asking yourself whether you believe in the business model and if the company will eventually go in public. Of course, whether those sorts of compensation packages are worthwhile is straying into investment advice, which goes well beyond the scope of this video. The last aspect to consider is not one of the three major components, but that I still find important, which is a sign-on bonus. A sign-on bonus is a one-time thing, so it is not the same as annual bonus. However, a sign-on bonus is often open to negotiation, while an annual bonus usually is not. As we look at my three offers, we will consider all of these things. 
salary annual bonus, equity, and sign-on bonus to calculate the overall value of those offers. Now, since we are talking about the real-life offers that I actually received, I think it would be helpful to look at the context and how it can explain the value of each. Or put another way, what was the larger competitive environment in which I was able to get those offers? At the time that Lyft, Airbnb, and Twitter all offered me positions, I had only been working as a data scientist for around a year and a half. Remember that when I share my job offers, the compensation will likely look very different for a candidate with 5 or 10 years of experience. Also, all the offers I got were in 2019. That was over 3 years ago now. If you are curious, I will also show the value of the packages today at the end of this video so you can judge for yourself if I made the right decision or not. I also want to make clear here the chronological order of events. I interviewed with Airbnb first, followed by Lyft, and the last was Twitter. However, the order I received offers back was Twitter, Lyft, and Airbnb. As I continued throughout the interview process, I feel I got better at it. Twitter's interview was fairly difficult. But when I left, I was pretty confident that I would get an offer. I also got all of these offers within a single week, which definitely made things interesting and a little bit easier for me. Because of my time frame, I was able to quickly compare the offers and make a decision instead of having to wait until I had heard back from other places. Although this sounds like the result of smart planning, I cannot take credit for it. I was a little desperately searching for a new job at that time, and it just happened that way. As some of you may know, I was laid off in 2019, and I began looking for a job as soon as possible. But if you can plan to get offers at the same time, it can be a great advantage, as you will be able to use the leverage existing offers give you. Let's get right to it and start looking at my offers in more detail. The first offer I got was from Twitter. Twitter offered me 140k in yearly salary, a 10% annual bonus, a total of $133,300 stocks, and a sign-up bonus of 20k. This was actually the lowest offer I got in terms of total compensation. Not including the sign-up bonus, which of course is just a one-time deal, the yearly compensation added up to around $187,250. How did I get that number? Remember when we were discussing how stock works. This $133,300 worth of stock is for 4 years, so we have to divide by 4 to get the yearly amount. That leaves us with $33,250 annually. I also need to calculate the annual bonus, which was 10%. That will be 0.1 multiplied by the base salary of 140k, giving me a bonus of 14k. Then I simply add everything together. $33,250 in annual stock plus the annual salary of 140k plus the annual bonus of 14k means the yearly compensation would have been around 187k. Now that did turn out to be less than my other offers, but the one thing I did have to consider was the fact that at the time of these offers, Twitter was the only publicly traded company. That means that Twitter's stock offer was more like real money, while Lyft and Airbnb were not yet at that stage. In the end, that did not prevent me from going with Airbnb, but it is something to think about. Remember that RSU and stock are not the same thing, so you do want to think about whether a company has gone public or not when looking at offers. Okay, moving on to Lyft. Lyft offered me a level 4 position, which means one level above an entry level, which is level 3. The salary was 155k with a 15% annual bonus and a total value of 378,800 RSU. At that time, Lyft was not yet public, but the reason they offered RSU is that their valuation was stable. They also offered me a 10k sign-on bonus. Okay, time to do the calculation again. So I was offered RSU valued at $378,800. Remember that you have to divide by 4 though. That means it was $94,700 per year. Next, we must also calculate the annual bonus. 15% of a 155k salary will be $23,250. Adding together the salary, annual bonus, and the RSUs, the total yearly compensation, not including the sign-on bonus from Lyft, 
would have been over 272k. I was also told that there was room for negotiation with this offer. So in general, it's a very generous offer. But what about Airbnb? First off, Airbnb's base salary was the most at 170k a year. Like Lyft, they offered a 15% annual bonus. Their sign-on bonus was also the largest, which was 25k. For the ICU, they gave me 350k for four years, or 91,875 dollars annually. Not including the sign-on bonus, Airbnb's offer was over 287k, which was the highest of all the offers. Now to summarize, if we include the sign-on bonus for the first year, my offers broke down to this much for the first year. Twitter is $207,250, Lyft is $282,950, and Airbnb is $312,375. All three companies offered me compensation that was very good for a candidate with only one and a half years of experience. Now, if you are still with me at this point, I want to give you some confidence. Even if you only have less than two years of experience, you will still be able to get a very good offer. And if you wonder about how I have done it, I'd say doing well in interviews is really important. Once you start interviewing, the interviewer will not care too much about your background or experience. Basically, every candidate is treated equally in the interview process. What matters is your performance during interviews. And you can find lots of videos on interview tips and strategies on my channel. Okay, let's go back to the topic. Now, you can probably see at this point why I went with Airbnb. However, compensation was not the only thing that impacted my decision. I also considered the overall work environment and the projects I will be working on. I liked the culture at Airbnb, and I knew I wanted to work there. Another thing I want to mention is that I also negotiated with Airbnb, which is probably why that offer ended up being better than the other two. My initial offer from Airbnb was around 230k, which means I was able to negotiate an 80k increase of my annual compensation. This proves negotiation can be very beneficial. That's all I will say about this topic now because I'm planning on talking about it in the very next video. So my next video will continue looking at offers, but this time focusing specifically on offer negotiation. I will explain the secrets and tips I used to successfully negotiate with Airbnb and also discuss how to negotiate when you have no competing offers. I know negotiation is not something everyone is good at or willing to do, but it can be very effective, and I will share the exact strategy I followed to get the outcome, so subscribe to my channel for updates so you don't miss it. Now, as promised, let's look at today's value of those offers. The only factor that could have changed is the stock, as the price fluctuates, and this will impact the overall value of those offers. So to figure out the change, we will compare stock prices when I was offered versus the price today. Basically, January 2019 versus March 2022. For Twitter, the stock offered by Twitter amounted to an average amount about 33k per year. And the Twitter's stock price did fluctuate, and there was a spike in price in early 2021. However, the current price is pretty much the same as what it was three years ago. So the overall value of my Zen offer did not increase much. Specifically, it increased about a few thousand dollars. For Lyft and Airbnb, both of them went public since the time I got the initial offers. Lyft went public in 2019, actually only a month after I got the offer, and Airbnb went public in 2020. The performance of their stocks were a little different. How it reflects on today's value of my initial offer is that, for Lyft, the total annual compensation decreased by 15k, which is still a very good offer. But for Airbnb, the stock price has always been above its initial public offering value. That has led to the value of my initial offer increasing by 50%, which made my Airbnb offer valued at over 460k. Well, it seems that I made the right decision, but I want to mention that stock is really hard to predict. There are lots of uncertainties involved. I certainly won't suggest you choose a company based on its predicted stock performance. What's more important is if you feel you would enjoy the work and the environment there. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions related to compensation, feel free to leave a comment below. I will see you in the next video. Bye guys!